My name's Paul Raymond. Welcome to my world of erotica. It is such a good night to kiss. Someone said to me, why don't you play Paul Raymond? And I went to Michael and said, why don't I play Paul Raymond? And he said, yeah, that's a good idea. It took quite a long time, you know, to research, then working on the script with uh, Matt Greenhalgh before we kind of worked out what exactly the story was going to be. But it was always that Steve would be Paul, yeah. Tony Power, uh, he was the man who kind of introduced pornography to Paul Raymond. Uh, he brought him Men Only, uh, sold him the idea, and then edited uh, all of his porn magazines, grew the porn empire and here in the States, made Raymond a multimillionaire and himself uh, in the bargain. So the film kind of covers the story from three different angles, three women, his wife, the lady he ran off with, and mainly is his daughter, Debbie Raymond. And Steve very much took my hand and, uh, and showed me the road of, uh, of improvisation and uh, built my confidence up during filming and hopefully this film is, um, is going to show people what he can do and, and his emotional sort of uh, growth that he, I mean he charters from party man to this broken father and, uh, and it, it's, a, it's an immense performance. And they're very beautiful women and having actors of that calibre playing those roles makes you, it's very easy to fall in love with any of them really. Um, Although I've been in love, falling in love with uh, to, uh, um, Imogen would be a bit weird because she's my daughter, but, you know. Mr Raymond, what makes a good striptease artist? Well, the girls are, in a sense, actors, and they must persuade the men that they are enjoying the experience. Uh, so it's a performance, and they must be convincing. And how did your career begin? Well, I'm an entertainer first and foremost. I started out with a mind-reading act, um, and I soon realised that uh, people like to look at attractive girls and they liked it even more if the girls had no clothes on. Uh, so in that sense, in that sense alone, I could read people's minds. All along, I, found, I thought um, Michael and Matt's approach was just really perfect, because I always saw the story as being tragicomic, and that's really what they've got. It starts off as comedy and slides into something much darker. He is the most dynamic director um, He's just so extraordinary because he kind of shoots it a bit like a documentary. So he doesn't really call action, he doesn't really call cuts, and you're just there in character being for sort of eight hours every day. I like working on location, and it seemed like it, it, was, it was important to, to film it here in the real places. And we were lucky that a lot of the real places that still exist from the kind of 50s or 60s or 70s allowed us to film here. So we filmed in you know, the uh, French House and Ronnie Scott's and Maison Berto and all those places. It was, it was important that we sort of captured you know, the essence of Soho and the Soho in the past really, the old Soho, that was so sort of glamorous and seedy all at the same time. And you know, we did everything you have to do to try and recreate it and we managed to do it quite well I think. Think of one person that you can say, say has never had a whack. Mother Teresa. Right, name me another person. Gandhi. Come on. 